You have surgery in two days? Day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow, yeah. So you're so I am running all the errands. Hello, great. Doing all the things before I am not allowed to lift my arms past here for like three weeks. So I'm very busy. What? Tomorrow will be a very busy day. And then I will get sliced and diced and hibachi'd up. Well, you're going to be out. Hello, green. You're going to have like take two weeks off to recoup. So you'll, you'll, be, you'll be back yeah. in a bit. We'll have some guests yeah. on for a bit. I think after two weeks, I'll probably be okay. I'll probably, you know. We'll see. Be feeling better. We have it covered one way or it's, another. I'd like. As I understand it, the critical point you have to pass, this might be TMI for some of you, is when the drains come out. Because what they're going to do, one of the things they're going to do is hang little testicles off of me. To drain off any excess fluid to prevent swelling. That, I, and I will have to empty those three to four times a day. And she's stupid. How much stuff comes out of my body? Flesh is terrible. And uh, and I said flesh is terrible. Yeah, I, I need it. so. From everybody I have heard from, the critical point is once you get the drains off, everything gets way easier. I think well, that's, well, you have yeah, that like sounds a right. Testicles hanging from three feet, the tubing hanging off your boobs. Everything's kind of uncomfortable and suck. So, because they are like they look like they look like old scrotums, like they're these little balloons. That fill up with the fluid that causes swelling. Mm. You know. I know. The human body's gross. Yes, it is. Let's get the intro going. Oh. So... Each week, as we're the Radio Dead Air audience, we're off the worldwide interweb. Sports or stop bring back here for a little second. We like to call. What the fuck? Well, we're going to start back at the 4th of July parade. Now, the 4th of July, typically, as the years have gone, we, we come to expect certain things, usually involving explosions. That's typically our, what happens here. Yeah. They're still blowing shit up in my neighborhood. It's very annoying. So that... That means this being the weird 4th of July story, just sort of left field. I wasn't expecting this. It, I, I don't think anyone was really expecting this, especially the people at the uh, the 4th of July parade. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Tara, just bask in it. Native American costume causes controversy at Iowa Fourth of July parade. Now that sounds a little generalized. Let's let's drill down to, to what really happened here. Um, uh, very dumb. Uh, an entry in Fourth of July parade in Muscatine uh, was causing controversy. Video from a public access YouTube channel shows so footage of the parade entry. A horse rider is leading a woman wearing what it looks like a bear costume with her hair hands tied down the parade path. Muscatine Chamber of Commerce, who sponsored the parade, does, does not condone the display. Quote, it was brought to the attention of the Greater Muscatine Chamber of Commerce and Industry that there was a parade entry consisting of a woman dressed in Native American attire with a rope around her hands, walking alongside a horseback rider with a rope. Uh, don't know this behavior, blah, blah, blah. The group stated their intention was to pay homage to the Cherokee Nation on how unjustly they were treated. One Iowa... Yeah, yeah, sure. Was the woman actually Native American? Okay, so this wasn't, like, her idea to, like... Like, it wasn't, like, the Cherokee Nation's idea to troll the fuck out of the parade. No. Because that would be kind of awesome. 
no. to be like, actually, just so you know, y'all are terrible. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. There was nobody involved. Is Muscatine Chamber of Commerce says in the future it will have to approve all parade participants to make sure this doesn't happen again. Hold on a second. Does that mean you weren't approving them before? Yeah, you were just letting anybody show up and be in the parade? Just anybody wandering into the fucking 4th of July parade doing what the fuck ever? That's a bad idea. That's a very bad idea. There should you be some sort of paper. fucking public. You can't. There should be some kind of paper trail. Because when you want to do yeah. a racism, someone needs to be able to come up to you and go, are you Brad? Did you do the racism? Oh, we don't like that. Please yeah. stop. Go home, Brad. Brad, go, go home. Oh, you, you've, uh... Oh, my God, there was a Brad involved. Oh, shit. <laughs> Some conscious shit Isn't going on. you always... Oh, yeah. Wait, what? How the fuck in your... Okay, I guess let's just be generous and, and interpret this as they wanted to help. Sure. How did this seem like a good setting? There's grilling, there's kids, there's hot dogs, there's fireworks, and you want to just like, okay, now remember this shit. Brought to you by... Also... Well, what's wrong with your brain that makes you think this is helping? I, I'm pretty sure you want to help. I'm like, oh, you, your brain is bad. <laughs> you I need to turn it in and and see if you're under warranty because it's bad. Here, sometimes you get an idea and you get so wrapped up in it that you don't go back and realize, you know, that was a pretty bad idea. I had. maybe I shouldn't do. It. Like in World Larpers. Yeah. Everybody has built a character and gotten so far into doing it. Yeah. Everybody who LARPs. And and at some point it dawns on you that it's a terrible idea. For whatever reason. Well, well it just won't work. I, I knew quite a few people who they who could not yeah. know it was a terrible idea. That's true. Like there's we had a lot of larps with some racist ass shit. Amarillo had a lot of Nazi outfits, surprising enough, back in the day. Yeah. Also, some blackface. We had a little, little blackface here. Some like weirdly accurate, elaborate Nazi outfits, yeah. too. And that. But yeah, like at a certain point in the process, it should dawn on you. That your idea is terrible. But it doesn't all. And here's the key. Here's the key, white people. If you don't know, if you have if you have an idea and you think it's a good idea and you think you're helping, what you need to do, if it involves people of a different ethnicity than you, is ask one of them. And if you don't know any. Don't fucking, just don't do the thing. Just don't. You're not fucking. Because if you, if you do not know a single person of that ethnicity, you should just leave it alone. Speaking of bad ideas that they didn't think the fuck through, we're back at the fucking airport. I think we're, it feels like we're at the airport every goddamn week with this show. Yeah, that's becoming our bread and butter. I, I I don't know I I flown and I don't know how this shit keeps happening. All right, so man flees arrest at Minneapolis airport by opening plane door, running under the airfield. Arling. Authorities say what the fuck. Authorities say a flight passenger with an outstanding warrant managed to try to evade arrest at a Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport Sunday night by opening a plane's emergency exit door. And running onto the airfield. If the escape occurred about 11.15 p.m. Parked Sun Country Airlines flight from Orlando. 
Uh, so, you know, like, of course it was a Florida flight. Um, police were waiting by the, waiting at the gate to arrest 44 year old New Bright. Although the passengers were. Because you know where they got, like, lots of cops? Airports. While other passengers were leaving the plane, he opened an emergency door over a wing and ran. Airport police found the man inside an airline service food truck around 11.40 p.m. Notified authorities. He was arrested and being held in Hennepin County Jail. Police said the man was wanted for violating a restraining order, also had an active felony drug warrant in Wright County. All right. First of all, let's start off with but that. He, but, he but he took some time to get a snack, though. First of all, you had a warrant there, right? Yeah. It's yeah. actually right, W-R-I-T. You had a warrant, and you got away. You won. You were in Florida. Ain't nobody arresting your ass in Florida. That whole place is going up in flames. You were free. What, did you leave the stove on? You come back? the fuck like didn't it occur to you like wait a minute if i get out of the uh oh oh this was a bad idea like how did you how the fuck did you think this was gonna go and secondly one of the the worst times to try to slip away at an airport ever is very early and very late yeah because there's nobody there and if you're trying to come in from the tarmac, every single door has a little alarm on it. Or it's locked and you need a scan to get through it. So you're just basically running. The only place you had to do had to escape was to jump into a food truck. They're going to get around to that. Yeah. Now, and also, you are not an adorable little calico cat. No. <laughs> so... You can't just throw yourself into doors and get away with it. But maybe the airlines should start deadbolting the doors. Yeah, it's one of those. I guess that's probably a safety hazard. Yeah, it's like one of those fire fire door, you can't chain the fire door kind of thing. Which yeah. makes sense on the one hand, but should there be like some sort of, you know, authorization thing or something? So that just everybody can't be like, whoop, bye. Yeah, it's happening a lot. It's happening. I mean, you'd like to think that door would be set to only open if there's an emergency situation, like if the masks come down, right, or whatever, or if the plane stops moving. Should be what yeah. those other ones. Not, oh, but yeah. apparently you could just open that shit. Yep, which is terrifying i love this also this dude's 44 and hopping out on the wing of a plane nope no thank you i would not no no i would be like you know what not, you got because all you did not on, not on these yeah not on these knees all you did was you got not instead of just getting arrested you got arrested tired you got arrested all yeah. like sore and messed up we're running around for a half hour trying to find a place to shove your ass. There's a dumb ass on the wing of the plane. Yes, lady. Oh, yes. The guy was 44. Yes, he's 44. Old enough to know better. Yeah. Speaking of old enough to know better, we're going to Kansas City for this one. Oh. Um. Kansas City, here I come. Yeah. And then some. Uh, eventually, if you get pulled over enough time for driving drunk, they take your license and you're not allowed to do it again. Yeah. That's a hint that maybe you should stop driving drunk and get some help. It is not a hint that you should get creative about your travel options. Kansas City man with chronic DWI history allegedly stole Kansas City bus, led cops on a chase. 
34 year old man with a history of drunken driving was arrested Friday after he allegedly led off police officers on a chase in a stolen Kansas City area transportation authority bus. Bus reported stolen around 12:20 a.m. Officers followed with lights and sirens until the driver pulled over to avoid stop sticks. Officers then pried the doors open and forcibly removed Adam E. Boat. Boat? Boat? B O G T. I think Boat. Boat of uh, Kansas City from inside the bus. He allegedly smelled of alcoholic beverages and exhibited signs of impairment during the encounter with officers. He declined to participate in a field sobriety test. Court orders obtained to pay, uh, get blood, blood sample. Um, votes bond was revoked. Uh, he's been, one case stems from August 2021 incident. It broke the windows of a silver Jeep whose driver was passed out behind the wheel. Two months later, a vote was arrested for alleged DWI hit run. So, all right, number one, you were already on the bus. Congratulations, someone is driving for you. Yeah. It's it's not not one of those where you could be like, you know what, I could do a better job. <laughs> because if you could have done a better job of it, you would still have a license. Also, Maybe it's time to look into a different hobby. Because <laughs> this one doesn't seem to be working out for you. It does not. Maybe paint by numbers. Or, I mean, I, I don't want to recommend knitting because that's like sharp things and you seem to like to drink a lot. <laughs> Deus, um, Deus Ex Tomato says, when they said take the bus, that's not what they meant and you know it. Maybe like driving video games, so you could just pretend and be bad at it digitally. Yeah, like the fact they had you pull out stop sticks on the bus. That's already that's that's at a point where they're like, you know what, fuck it, this stops now. Like everybody else. It who's unfortunate not like taking the bus sucks no matter how good the public transit is in your city taking the bus kind of sucks it really depends on where you are it really depends on where you are usually and by that i mean mean, not america you can't you can't control your environment you can't control the pace at which you're going to get where you're going like you know any anything where like for the same reasons air travel sucks, pretty much any form of public transit it's gonna suck because you cannot control your environment, right? And then to have somebody hijack that motherfucker. It's no. Like where were you Okay, let's say you got to your destination. The fuck are you gonna park it? Like, let's if you actually made it home, the next morning someone's gonna knock at your door because there's a bus in your driveway, shithead. You can't just put a tarp over that shit. No. And the worst part is I bet Keanu Reeves didn't even show up. <laughs> Which is legitimately the only reason to hijack a bus is maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Is in hopes that, like, you will summon Keanu Reeves. But you won't. That's not his real job. Well, speaking of summoning people out of thin air, there, there's a, a a long history in America. It's a tradition. Um, That white, it's a white person thing. I know. When a white person really fucks up, we don't call on God. Instead, we try to create from nothing, from thin air, to take responsibility for us, we try to create a black person. Yeah, we do like to do that. And 
as always, it didn't fucking work. Thankfully. And double worse, it just to make this one worse, it's a cop. Florida, Florida Sheriff's employee said he was shot while, quote, two, quote, black men carjacked him. Later admits he shot himself while playing with his gun. That's not a you. <sighs> Man is reported as a reported as a telecommunicator, Fernando County Sheriff's Office, uh, was fired after he faked the story about getting shot while two black men, black men carjacked him. But it turns out his gunshot wound was self inflicted. Dakota Wood, what? Okay, this guy's name is Dakota. With an H. D A K O T A H. Dak Ota Wood. Like, what's that H doing there? Nothing. It's it's just sort of, it's there for the ride. Yeah. They picked it up off the side of the road. Uh, like, Dakota is a perfectly, perfectly fine word. It didn't mean that. It's fine, it, it works. Dakota Wood, 21, charged with tampering with or fabricating physical evidence, false reports of crimes. Wood's trouble began when police responded to a call, a call about an attempted carjacking shooting. Arrived at the scene, they found Wood suffering from a gunshot wound to his leg. Wood initially told police he was the victim of an attempted carjacking. Uh, Wood said the men displayed a firearm, made a threat to kill him before shooting him in the thigh. Wood said the shooter collected the shell casing prior to fleeing the area. After being shot, Wood said he obtained his personal firearm and fired approximately five rounds in self-defense. Wood further advised he believed he hit one of the suspects several times. So wait. You invented people. Imaginary people. But you couldn't go by without no i totally shot the dude what you that that whole masculine urge to, to oh 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 that leapt up in your throat there did it i mean fortunately hospitals never keep records right of things like that would also told police the suspects were black and, and fortunately the cops never they they've never developed a method of like figuring out what gun a bullet comes out of. Right. He added he had get- worked for the cops, dude. He invented the carjacking story because he didn't want to get in trouble. Man, okay. Look. The worst part about doing real talk serious. When these motherfuckers do this shit, because police in America, general, but police in America and Florida are terrible. What you have done is you have set loose a horde of evil flying fucking monkey on a community where ain't nobody done shit. But what yeah. are they doing? They're looking for someone who shot someone. And all the only description they have is black. So that may I just go and kill somebody. Potentially, yeah. That happens. That's like the whole thing with swatting. You know, yeah. the, the calling the SWAT on people. You know, when you do that, they're bringing overwhelming, stupid ass force. So that makes this dumb. This is worse than just you're a dumbass who didn't want to get in trouble. Not only are you a dumbass, lying idiot. You've now potentially hurt somebody who didn't have shit to do with this. The article doesn't mention that they arrested it. They might have. They could have. Oh, this was... Uh, you got to keep your lies simple, okay? Yeah. If you're going to lie, you got to keep it as simple as you possibly can. Right. The more elaborate it gets, the harder it is to maintain, all right? All you had to say was you were cleaning your gun. Yeah. And there was a round in the chamber. Oh, shit. You're going to look stupid, but way less stupid than I was. I thought it was a toy. Or, oh, yeah, there was this big, scary black guy, and he shot me.
fucking stop inventing black people. Stop it. Guns aren't toys. Guns aren't toys. For fuck's sake. Oh, this next one. Oh, this fucking guy. This is more. I'm I'm pissing myself off a lot this week because uh, this is more of the the that the stupid shit where people are doing things for internet fame and bullshit. This one really. Because this, this is like we not like I needed a bad name, but Jesus Christ. Prominent TikToker arrested, accused of fabricating crimes to gain followers. Yeah. As soon as you said prominent TikToker. And I like that fucking app. I am a TikToker. I I, I know, but I, I, I like TikTok. But prominent tiktoker go fuck yourself gadno authorities accuse anthony ganji of driving a truck with free candy sign and other stunts to get police attention look, look at this dumb shit just just the this social media personality known for his quote trying to get the fbi at my door tiktok series has succeeded in drawing the attention of police at home here in Canada. Anthony Ganji, 27, was arrested for public mischief this week, accused by authorities of fabricating crimes to gain more followers. Can we pause? Oh, yeah. Order? His TikTok series is trying to get the FBI at my door. Yes. But he lives in Canada. Yes. It's not going to work, man. <laughs> Not literally nothing you do is gonna get the FBI there. They don't they don't have jurisdiction there. Angie's TikTok series has more than four hundred and forty thousand followers, started nine point five million combined views. He maintained no nobody told him. He maintained we're not coming. Maintains multiple accounts on various social media platforms to distribute his god his content, drawing more than five hundred thousand subscribers together. Police in Gatineau, uh, Quebec, say they are uh, investigating in May after received a complaint regarding a person driving a truck with the words free candy displayed on the side, but authorities say it was an attempt to attract children. TikTok video with Ganji's county scene wearing a fake mustache, driving a U-Haul rental around the neighborhood, filming children and pedestrians, while also yelling free candy. Um, a caption for the May 26 video described me as, quote, my biggest project yet. Police allegedly discovered multiple videos with similar intentions of fake crimes. Police say that officers identified several videos featuring Ganja simulating crimes in an attempt to provoke a reaction from various law enforcement agencies. Uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police tried to contact me, but that he continued to create the videos. Okay, this is Canada. You know this because the cops said, Oh, hey, uh, could you stop, please? Could you could you not do that, eh? Hey? Could you, could you stop, please? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no. Sorry, no. And he keeps doing it. One of the videos, uh, he cut a piece of cardboard in the shape of a human head in what he says was an attempt to make his neighbors believe they were being spied on. This cardboard cut out face window and faced the neighbor's property and went outside to film how it looked from their perspective. Continue sh shenanigans in a two-part video, which he waited for more than four hours in a hazmat suit, waiting for city garbage collectors to show up on their scheduled route. He had placed a barrel bearing a nuclear waste symbol to see if garbage collectors would take it. Angie asked. They responded, no. Angie's wife, who remains unnamed, also makes appearances in his content. None of these things are even really... For lives. No. They're just annoying bullshit. <laughs> like if you're... Even if you were in the correct country for the FBI to come to your door, this shit wouldn't do it, hon. You're 
You're just an annoying creeper. Uh, Shiny says, Candid Canada. Uh, this, like, I'm not sure you understand what crime is. All your, this is called being a public fucking nuisance. Yeah, like, you might get the HOA at your door. And that's worse. That's worse than the FBI. The thing about social media, this is me, very damn kids. The thing about social media is somewhere along the line, there was like, if there's not specifically a law yet, yeah, and we go out and do it, we get pension. Something, something, money. So we're going to run out and do stuff. That people aren't normally don't normally do, and trying to be these antisocial little psychotic bastards. There's a line on TikTok, a very specific line where I will unfollow somebody, and it's when they announce as soon as they put up the video announcing that they have quit their job to be a full time content creator. I'm out because. 99.99999% of the time, shit's about to get insufferable. I mean... Just insufferable. I mean... No, because on TikTok, they don't... They then <laughs> don't... They don't continue the thing that made them their following. They just start... Everything is now an ad... Or they, like, only do, like, debates with people. Like, they go on live and debate shit, which is the fucking worst. You're making or me very glad, glad I don't... Stopping halls. You make me very glad I don't go near fucking TikTok. Yeah. Like, the only time I ever see TikTok shit is, like, if it's an embed on a website... Or someone has put it on Twitter. Like a lot. I follow like a lot of animal rescues. I watch a lot of cute animal videos on TikTok. Um, but yeah, like as soon as someone gets big and is like, I've decided to become a full time content creator. Nope, we're done. Cause it's just gonna be ads and you showing off. Like the 50 packages of free shit brand sent you today and opening them. Or you going live to debate people, which is just everybody yelling at each other. And then you recording it to post later and talk about how you kicked their ass. No good. Again, I didn't, I didn't do it. That's. Exactly. That's what the difference is. And like, I feel like, I, I feel like it happens with some YouTubers, but YouTube, you gotta hustle a little harder. So like, you still have to have a thing that you do that people want to watch. On TikTok, like, there was one chick that's now a millionaire because literally she bobbed her head to music. She got a record deal. You don't have to do things on TikTok to become famous. That's the difference. I'm very glad I don't know go near the tick. It sounds bad. <laughs> we have a last one for us this week. I guess we'll put this under the heading of, was that wrong? Sh should I not have done that? Tourist apologizes for Coliseum defacement, saying he had no idea it was so ancient. See video last month using his keys to etch his love for his girlfriend on a wall in the Coliseum in Rome. Letter of apology saying he had no idea the nearly 2,000 year old monument was so ancient. Quote, I admit with deepest embarrassment that
that it was only after what regrettably happened that I learned of the monument's antiquity. Uh, the man, identified by his lawyer as 31-year-old Ivan Danilov Dmitriov, uh, wrote a letter dated July 4th addressed to the Rome Prosecutor's Office. Of course, the letter were uh, first published by say, the Rome Daily uh, newspaper, Il Messaguero. In it, Dmitriov acknowledged, quote, the seriousness of the deed I committed and offered his, quote, heartfelt and sincere apologies to Italians in the entire world for the damage of the monuments. Carving came to light last month after a fellow tourist in Rome filmed a man scratching Ivan plus Haley, 23623, to a brick on a wall of the Coliseum. Then he went, You ain't even been together that long. <laughs> You're carving your name in literal stone. You been together a month? <laughs> And he went viral, and Ivan, whose identity was not that known, was widely reviewed for his devil may care attitude, admonished with an expletive by the video taker. Dmitriov carried on. So pretty much he went, Hey, fucker! And he's like, Yeah. Brick that was defaced was actually part of a wall built during the mid 19th century restoration of the monument. It was inaugurated in the first century AD. It made little difference to Coliseum authorities who said they didn't change the fact it was an act of vandalism. Identified by Italian military police officers, brought check the two lovers' name with registered guests in Rome, found they'd stayed at an Airbnb rental. Okay, so what happened was the shit you did was so big, there as the fucking cops called the goddamn city for you. They did actual fucking detective work to find your ass. You're the city where there are dicks carved in walls that are historical. It's, there are, in fact, historical dicks. The Romans would go around carving dicks and shit. They thought that was in great everything. in everything. And even still. But also, what did you think you were visiting it for? Like, what did you think you were doing there if you didn't understand that it was old and historical? Did you think this broken down ass building was like avant garde art? Like, man, this is the shittiest Coliseum I've ever been to. Yeah. Like, did they have the FIFA World Cup here? Because this sucks. This sucks. I mean, like, are they going to have arena tours and shit? No, fuck that. Like, what did you think you were there to see? Oh, I didn't know it was that. This is like it's like George fucking Costanza. Was that wrong? Yeah, like should, should half I, the building isn't even there. So, like, should I not have done that? Oh, all right. Briefly, I have to put this up on the screen. No, you little shit, get down! Calvin? No! Calvin, get down. Where is he? He's climbing the fucking wall. Calvin? My God! Yeah, I know! Hey! hey Calvin, that's not safe! Calvin, get down. What are you fucking with, buddy? Can he hear you? No, can't. I can turn on the mic so he can't hear me. As a matter of fact, you know what? Um, of course. Hey. Calvin. No. Calvin, get down. God? Fast? Calvin, get down from there. I know you Make can hear me. me. I know both <laughs> of you can hear me. Calvin. Get down. <laughs> there you go. Cat, you like meet me. You don't even have a body. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? 
I'm carving my name in the wall. Is this old? So yeah, I guess the the oh, there he goes. No, that's not Calvin. That's that's the that one we don't know. <laughs> that's one of the, the local cats who shows up. Yeah, what do we learn this week? <laughs> what do we learn this week? We learned that um, if you are going to some place that's a huge tourist attraction, you don't understand why it's a tourist attraction. Maybe don't start carving your name and shit. Maybe ask why it's a thing. You don't even need to ask. You want a phone? Wikipedia, that shit. There's probably a plaque somewhere. That you could read. We learned that TikTok just makes people the worst. Absolutely the worst. Yeah. Worst. Yeah. The fucking worst. Um, we've learned that inventing a black person is not going to get you out of trouble. It's just going to make it that much worse for you. Yeah. And maybe get somebody killed. So don't do that. Please learn if you are so bad at driving, they don't let you drive no more. That doesn't mean you're like, well, this one was just sitting around. I'll take it. You can't do that. Yeah. I think you've already proven that the bus driver is going to do a better job at this than you are. If you try to escape from the police onto a tarmac, you're not going anywhere. You dumb fuck. And finally, we've learned that, uh, you know what? If you're not of the correct ethnicity to express some sort of transgression against that ethnicity and that culture and that, that religion or whatever, and you still want to help, maybe consult somebody first. And you know what? If if you're not, maybe, let, just, maybe just let them do it. Yeah, let them take the lead on this. You could be support. Yeah. You could be backup. You could be production crew. Just pull your ass back a little. And not like, on the fuck would be like great. You want a tribute to the Cherokee Nation. Maybe let them do that themselves. Like, could you imagine they, if you're- They probably have people. You're at that fucking uh, parade that all of a sudden is like, there's this woman being pulled around, tied up, and then here come the Shriners and their little fucking guards. 